Hello friends, welcome to the corner that I try to pretend doesn't exist in my bedroom. Uh, these are books that I have accumulated over the last um, couple months. I don't I think some of these are here from January. I don't really remember the last time that I filmed a book haul. So we're going to play a little game and see how much of the content of said books does Kendra remember and why did she want these books in particular or why did she keep it I guess would be the <laughs> bigger question. And uh, yeah, let's go on this adventure together. So I have a couple books that I bought or were given to me first. So I just bought Amanda Ludic's Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Space. So I think this specifically deals with bodily difference and disfigurement. I saw Jen Campbell reading this. I saw a bunch of other disability advocates reading this. There's also an audiobook, which is important because I cannot tell you how many books about disability that I have tried to find that don't have an audiobook. And I was like, how does that make sense? So. That's why I picked up that one. Lisa remembered. These two were given as a gift to me. Um, this is Monstrance Volume 2 and Volume 3. I've already read them. Uh, I checked them out from the library, but I did not own them. So now I own Volumes uh, 1 through 4. So that's exciting because this is one of my favorite comics. Recently, I got this because they sent this to me, I believe unsolicited, but uh, I'm so excited that I have this because Days of Distraction by Alexandra Chang was recommended by Liberty Hardy over at All The Books, uh, that podcast, and uh, I really love Liberty's recommendations, and I am hoping that this book uh, stands up to all the hype around it, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to reading that one. If Liberty says that you should read a book, and then I, you should read a book. A book that I picked up because of Jacqueline over at Six Minutes From Me, I will link her channel down below, is The Verge by uh, Lydia Yukonovich. And this is just a short story collection. This was sent to me by Riverhead, so thank you so much to Riverhead. But I love the cover. I mean, Riverhead's covers are always amazing, but this is just, it's just cool. It's just cool. A book I first heard about at SIBA uh, this past fall is These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card and then they sent me, Simon Schuster sent me a finished copy and this is going to be a book I'm reading for our Caribbean heritage theme this June, I believe. Uh, so this is high up on my TBR because I have a deadline. <laughs> you know, that's what happens. If you want to get a book done, just make a deadline for it. A book I saw wandering around uh, Bookstagram from Pantheon is We Ride Upon Sticks by uh, Quam Berry, and so I'm going to be reading this one. I have the audiobook already. Uh, thanks so much to Pantheon. This is about, I want to say field hockey, and a girl figuring out her life, and somehow it involves field hockey. That's really all I'm getting from this. Am I anywhere close? Yes! Ha! Ah, look! High school field hockey. <laughs> I wasn't so far off. There we go. So this book was sent to me by Beacon Press, and this is A Black Woman's History of the United States uh, by Dana Ramey Berry and Kelly Nicole Gross. And this is a book, obviously, Black Women's History of the United States, but it's also part of the Revisioning History series, which Jacqueline told me about when we were doing our history theme for Women's History Month. And so I was researching history books written by women, and several of this series are written by women. There's a Disability History of the United States, a Queer History of the United States, an Indigenous People's History of the United States, a Black and uh, Latinx History of the United States. There might be one other one, I can't remember, but... Um, very excited about the series in general. I'm so happy that this came out, so definitely one to be reading. Um, I love Rebecca Solnit, and so they sent me this uh, beautiful recollections of my non-existence copy, finished copy, um, and Viking also sent me the tote bag that goes with it, which I don't know where it is. It's probably somewhere with my other tote bags, but this is her first memoir, and I'm just so thrilled. She wrote uh, so many wonderful essay collections for Haymarket, so uh, I love Rebecca so much. Another book I have is Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong, an Asian American Reckoning. This is from One World. We are discussing this for Asian and Asian American Heritage Month here in May. So I have a deadline for this in like a week, so I should probably put this away and like read it at some point. This was sent to me by Avid Reader Press. This is Fight of the Century, uh, edited by Michael Chabon and uh, Ailet Waldman. Again, trying to read backwards is not my forte. 
uh, anyway, so this is about a lot of the ACLU cases. So it says writers reflect on 100 years of landmark ACLU cases and includes uh, Charlie Jane Anders, Britt Bennett, uh, Michael Chabon, uh, Michael Cunningham, Jennifer Egan, David Eggers, Louise Erdrich, uh, William Finnegan, Neil Gaiman, Lauren Groff, Yaa Jesse, Desmond Ward, everyone. It includes everyone, apparently. Um, but yeah, thanks to Avid Reader Press, because this is definitely high up on my TBR. So, on the quest for an audiobook, haven't found it. If you have found the audiobook, tell me your preferred location. I have found that I can get it on Audible, but that's the only place so far. Normally, I try to use Scribd for most things, so... Or, like, my library. We'll see. A book I'm very, very thrilled about is So We Can Glow by Lisa Cross Smith. This is her short story collection out from Grand Central Publishing. And uh, her book with Hub City Press, Whiskey and Ribbons, was one of my favorites when it came out that year. So, ah, uh, love it. Yes, this is probably going to involve lots of love and romance and happy things. So I am trying to save this for a moment of need. But then I think about... We are in a, in a moment of need, aren't we? Uh, so this one is from Tin House. This is my autobiography of Carson McCullers by Dan Chaplin. And I've heard wonderful things about this, and I really love Carson McCullers. And I have heard lots of interesting discussions of this book on Instagram. So definitely one that I need to read. And I haven't seen too many people actually talk about Carson McCullers recently. I don't know. Maybe it's because I discovered her so late in life. Maybe if I had studied her in college, I would have read more about her, but then again, I've only read A Heart is a Lonely Hunter. I can't believe she wrote that. She was so young. It's just disgustingly talented. Okay. Another one I have um, I'm reading uh, because of Jacqueline Recommended is Black Sunday by Tola Rotimi Abraham, and this is out from Catapult. Again, they have a great, great covers. We have A Bite of the Apple, A Life with Books, Writers, and Virago. Uh, by Lenny Goodings, and this is involving publishing and writing and women, and so uh, they asked me if I would like this, and so they sent it to me. It's out from Oxford University Press. It's coming out in theory. I'm not sure if the date has been moved, but in the U.S. it's coming out in June, so, but that's the U.K. edition. So this is The Perfect World of Miweko Samita by Clarissa uh, Ginowin. So this is the second novel and an author that I follow on Instagram and, and Twitter and I read their first book and really enjoyed it and it definitely was a debut novel but there's definitely like sparks of something there so I'm looking forward to see what else she has to offer. Uh, so the author is an Indonesian born Singaporean writer and so I just find it so interesting to read her perspective. I haven't read too many authors from Singapore or Indonesia, so it's just something that I think um, we need to read more of. So her last book was set in Japan, and so was this one, and so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what else she has, what more stories she has to tell. Another book that was sent to me um, from Beacon Press is Being Human, an Unrepentant Memoir of a Disability Rights Activist by Judith Human, and uh, I have not read too much about disability activism. We don't really have like a Martin Luther King, um, really, and I think that's probably because one, we're just trying to survive, and two, like, there are so many different kinds of disabilities and disability communities, and until the internet, it was really hard for us to gather together because... <laughs> We're not the most mobile groups, typically, uh, and so I'm so excited to be able to read more about this, and obviously, like, um, she's been around for a long time, and I think, you know, we need to raise more, raise more awareness for disability rights activists who have had their work cut out for them for a very, very, very long time, and yeah, there's just not a lot of visibility for that, so very excited. Uh, another book that I'm very excited about is Mako Kawakami's Breasts and Eggs out from Europa and this is coming out this summer I think. I'm not sure if it's been moved or not but this is a book um, that I'm very much looking forward to reading for our Women in Translation Month. The translator's name is, uh, there's two of them, Sam Bett and David Boyd and so yes. If only there was an audiobook I would have already read those. But there isn't. So that'll be exciting. <laughs> Alright, so I think that's it for now. Um, I realized that the video is going to be like 20 minutes long, so we're gonna cut this in half. So this is the 
first part of my library cleaning out haul uh, and I'll be back next time with the second part. All right, see you then.